Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence first, human second. Can I see the sheets, please? So, my name is Jarno Duursma. I'm from the city of Groningen. I wrote four books. First one on social media in 2012. The last one about AI and the previous one about Bitcoin blockchain. So, this is my newest book, The Digital Butler. It's in Dutch. And I want to give it to the guy I saw 10 minutes ago wearing the He-Man Masters of the Universe t-shirt. Where is he? Okay, you can pick your book up <laughs> next in 10 minutes. You rock, my friend. Okay, so my company's called Studio Overmorgen. Um, and I went to Silicon Valley in May. Two weeks, first uh, week, Singularity University, second week, visiting companies and AI. Everyone in Silicon Valley is talking about AI, the next wave of digital disruption. And I recognize disruption when I see it. So I'm 40 years old and I saw disruption coming at first when I saw email, for a lot of you uh, not recognizable, when I saw WhatsApp coming and disrupting SMS, when I saw Napster killing the CD shop, uh, etc. And when I saw social media uh, disrupting news, when I saw Netflix disrupting TV, etc. And now the next wave of disruption is artificial intelligence. So this man, Kevin Kelly, he's a well-known futurist. He said, we're at the beginning of an industrial revolution with artificial intelligence. And I totally agree. So smart software matches or surpasses uh, human capabilities like seeing, uh, uh, object recognition, uh, facial recognition, uh, text-to-speech, speech-to-text, reasoning, uh, getting context out of large amounts of uh, data, new insights. And I'm going to tell, in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to tell something about that. So, uh, first of all, maybe there are some experts in the field of machine learning in the room, I'm not sure, but I'm, I oversimplified the, uh, the concept of machine learning to uh, make it tangible for everyone, so don't start tweeting or email me that this is oversimplified, I told you beforehand. So, uh, uh, the main driver of quality of artificial intelligence in the past four years is machine learning. And you have deep learning, supervised, unsupervised, reinforcement learning, uh, all uh, things you can uh, read if, in my book if you like. But I'm going to stick with the concept of machine learning. So, oversimplified, supervised learning. When you show a machine, a system, 10,000 pictures of a cat and 10,000 pictures of a dog, and you put in another picture of a dog, 10,000 and one, it will recognize that this is a cat, or if it's a dog. Uh, so we can teach machines to, uh, to get the patterns to make them their own rules. And who of you have seen this example? Lisa Dahl, hands up please. Okay, good example. Lisa Dahl playing the ancient board game of Go. And uh, the interesting thing with this is that um, at first the system, the AlphaGo uh, DeepMind system, played, uh, 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 saw 10,000 games played by humans, so it's distracted tactics. And then it played 30 million games against itself. So it improved by playing against itself, and as most of you know, the computer won uh, four to one last year. So we will have a new, uh, a new age, a new time frame, where a machine can distract patterns themselves. They can, machines will learn who we are, what we want to do, why we want to do this, where we are, etc., etc. So. Systems will know more about ourselves than maybe our partner or we know ourselves um, in the near future. This is the uh, CEO of Google, and Google is transforming, as you can see, from a mobile-first company to an AI-first company. Is my microphone off uh, sometimes, or am I wrong? Okay, so my question is, when you transform from mobile-first to AI-first, Will it be human second? So, 
What's the role of the human in the next 10 years? A while ago, I did a lecture with this uh, same subject, and someone said, hey, that's Berlusconi from Italy. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so I, 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 I'd like to show some examples of uh, which areas uh, are uh, mo improving the most concerning artificial intelligence. One of them is, of course, computer vision. So technology getting eyes to see with, getting sight. This is YOLO. This is an open source computer vision uh, program you can use. You can put it on uh, your uh, Raspberry Pi or other hardware. And it detects objects in, uh, in, in this case, in, in the center of a city. And what is interesting, uh, do I have a pointer maybe? No. I'm not sure. What is interesting is in the reflection of the window, in the reflection of the window, the computer system uh, recognizes what uh, the, uh, the handbag and the person and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So an AI system is not aware of any context, right? So it recognizes objects it sees in the reflection, but it does not recognize any context. So that's the the aspect we we humans are very good at. So. Uh, seeing ourselves in certain context, out-of-the-box thinking, abstract thinking, is, uh, are things that machines are very uh, incapable of. So, with technology gaining sight by computer vision, advancements in computer vision. So, have, uh, who of you have ever used Microsoft Cognitive Services? Please raise your hand. One. Okay. I should give him the book. No, just kidding. <laughs> so... Uh, it's an API system, cognitive services, Microsoft. It, it needs um, far less pictures to train on certain objects than any before. Okay, thanks a lot. Ah, okay, so with technology gaining sight, with technology gaining sight, there will be a tsunami of autonomous mobility. And not only the autonomous car, but also the autonomous drone, the autonomous van, the autonomous truck, et cetera, et cetera, the autonomous ship. So I was at, in, during my trip in Silicon Valley, I was at Google X, the innovation department of Google, and there were a lot of initiatives uh, combining computer vision and autonomous mobility. So this is a, a startup with, a, with the drone company and uh, computer vision trained on recognizing corrosion on antennas. So saving a lot of time, saving a lot of money, less dangerous, etc. So these are autonomous drones. Uh, can you please play this uh, short film? Not sure. Okay, what you're about to see, hopefully, are autonomous drones uh, creating a, a bridge between two different constructions. Um, okay, let me skip that and maybe for uh, another uh, moment. So, with the, the improvements in computer vision, there will be a tsunami of autonomous mobility. And not only the autonomous car, but also the drone, the van, etc. This was a pretty neat uh, uh, short uh, video clip, so uh, unfortunately it doesn't work. This is a patent of Amazon, and Amazon is, 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 wants to build a warehouse for autonomous drone delivery. This is not uh, science fiction. This is what will happen within five to ten years. And mainly because of the improvements in algorithms and in uh, uh, parts of computer vision. So another aspect with large improvements, uh, thanks to deep learning, machine learning uh, technologies, is facial recognition. Who of you owns an iPhone? Please raise your hands, okay. Who of you owns the iPhone 10? Please raise your hands. No one. <laughs> students, right? Students. <laughs> it's the truth. When, I, when I'm at a conference with CFOs and CTOs, mostly 30% um, 
has uh, some expensive iPhone. So I own the, the, the iPhone 10. The facial recognition feature is flawless. When I wake up in the morning, when I, when I uh, come from the shower, when, I'm, when it's late, when it's early, when it's dark, when it's light, it doesn't matter. So the facial recognition feature on the iPhone 10 is really flawless. And for people owning the iPhone uh, 6, 7, or 8, um, it maps the, the, the faces of people you take a picture of. So for you Android users, when, when I take a picture of my wife, it automatically puts it in a, a, a folder, a map, uh, where all other pictures are of my wife that I've taken in the past year. So it not only recognizes in, in different context uh, who's on the picture, but also it, it maps them all together. And the uh, facial recognition feed. This is, this is Schiphol, the airport, where the, uh, there's a pilot by, uh, for checking in at the airport before your flight through facial uh, recognition. Uh, this is Microsoft Cognitive Services. This talk is sponsored by Microsoft, not uh, just kidding, of course. Um, recognizing emotion uh, from facial expression. This is not flawless, so this is not perfect. This will be within two to three years. Detecting emotions, so I, normally I do a talk, a keynote from um, an hour and a half, so I, I really compressed it in 30 minutes, so you have to take my word on it. The emotional recognition um, uh, uh, from, from facial recognition is going to be perfect within two years. So you, you see here, surprise, now I use this one, uh, surprise, or anger, disgust, fear, contempt, happiness, etc., etc. And this is, for the Dutchies in the room, uh, a, a digital billboard in the city of Utrecht, where uh, the, there was a camera and this digital billboard and it scanned the people walking by on gender, age, ethnicity and the, 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 the emotional state and the period that they were, the time they were looking at the digital advertisement, at your digital. This is coming to a mall near you anytime soon. So it now has been shut up, be, uh, shut off because of uh, private, privacy concerns, but this is pretty uh, legal. So digital systems, AI systems are going to give us insights, totally new insights, answers to questions we never thought we'd had. They're going to fulfill needs we never thought could be fulfilled. Going to personalize and customize a lot of products and services. So let me get back to this Lisa Dahl uh, use case. So what's interesting about this case in, 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 in game number two, 2005, um, at move 37, the AlphaGo system did a move. It, it played on line five for the people who really want to know that detail. And, and Lisa Dahl was flabbergasted because no one ever in the beginning of the game plays at line five. They always play at line three or four. So he was, he was uh, flabbergasted. He left the room for 15 minutes thinking about his next move against AlphaGo. And uh, the presenter from, so it was broadcasted live on Chinese television, the presenter, thought the system made a mistake, so they, he thought that AlphaGo uh, made a mistake. And Lee Sedol uh, returned after 15 minutes, took place, the game proceeded after 50 moves. Move number 37 was very valuable. So I will not distract you with too much details, but 50 moves later, this system gave a whole new insight to the board game of Go. A whole new insight. So since then, this game has been played very different by players in the world. There has never been so much uh, attention and enthusiasm about the board game Go since this game in the spring of 2016. And for all of you who are following the news, 
two and a half weeks ago, we have a new version of AlphaGo called AlphaGo Zero. Who's, who heard about this system? Yeah, nerds. <laughs> okay, so the new system, AlphaGo Zero, it didn't learn anything about human tactics. It didn't analyze any human games. It was just told the rules, and the algorithm had to figure it out by himself. So it played in 36 hours, it played 5 million games against itself. So it, it, gained, it, it got a lot better and it played against itself. After 36 hours, version 2 was better than version 1. They played 100 games and the new version won 100 against nil. So this system is far better than version 1 and Google is now using the algorithm to teach it totally different things, transfer learning. So about these insights, Facebook is training an, a smartphone algorithm to determine what's the emotional state of the user by determining what, what words he or she is typing, the speed of typing, and the pressure someone puts on the keyboard of the smartphone. It tries to detect what's your emotional state. It's training an algorithm to detect this. So when it detects that you're angry, it can show you all kinds of advertisement. This is the truth. Okay. I will skip this one. This is a new, new uh, uh, um, a super chip by, by Microsoft. And okay, let me read this to you. Um, uh, this, this can translate three billion words across five million articles in less than a tenth of a second. In less than a tenth of a second. So is this perfect? Not yet. Will it be within three years? Yes, it will. So stop watching in the rear view mirror when you're looking at artificial intelligence. Look ahead in what's coming. There are huge advancements in software, and in hardware. So I can spend an hour talking about the advancements in har hardware. I will not, but believe me, there will be huge improvements in the quality of artificial intelligence. So Amazon patents predictive shipping. So it, it, it wants to ship something to you before you even know that you want this. <laughs> okay. I find this rather creepy, but you all can uh, get the humor of it. No, I'm d because systems, when, when, when 15,000 people that look like me, according to Amazon, ordered the ninth book of Harry Potter, then uh, it, will be, uh, it will be likely that I will also order this book. So AI companies, AI-driven companies, will know more and more who we are, what we're doing, what we want, why we want this, why we are doing things, etc., 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 because of data analytics and better algorithms. So improvements in language, natural language processing. Okay, so forget everything I've said in the past, what is it, 15, 20 minutes, and focus on this one. An algorithm summarizes lengthy text surprisingly well. So imagine you want to know something about Bitcoin blockchain, which it's, it's, it's good to know a lot about this technique. So you download 20 white papers on, on Bitcoin blockchain, you let the algorithm do the work, and you have 20 summaries of what's in, in each white paper, and you pick the one that uh, describes uh, this theme the best. So thanks to deep learning. This is Liarbird, and Liarbird is not speech recognition, but it's speech generation. So it needs one minute of audio, recording from a voice, and it can produce uh, the, the, every sentence from a keyboard, it can produce every sentence that you want it to say. So this is, uh, and once again, this is not perfect. When you record my voice, I've tried it myself, and you use the keyboard board and you type in different sentences, it's not perfect. But within two to three years, this will be perfect. And in 2017, we look at a picture and we wonder, is this Photoshop or isn't it? We will, in, in, in three years, we will look the same at speech generation. So this voice, is this the real voice of the people we're listening at or not? 
Let me introduce the concept of the connected brain. Who of you owns a Tesla? <laughs> so he owns a Tesla. Maybe Danny owns a Tesla, I'm not sure. So uh, Tesla is a connected car, right? So if a Tesla, uh, let me oversimplify. If a Tesla learns something about the force needed to brake during heavy rain, tomorrow with an update, every Tesla worldwide will know something about the force needed to brake during heavy rain, right? As if someone in the world, a human, learns to play violin and tomorrow everyone in the world knows how to play uh, violin. So Teslas scan the surroundings and tell each other about permanent objects in their surroundings. So connected uh, mind. Can you, can you please show this, uh, this short clip? <laughs> I'm not even sure if someone's over there at the, the technique, so... So let me tell you what you're hopefully about to see. So this is a, a, a short film uh, from a Tesla dashboard. Uh, it's, you, you see an accident, uh, you see impact, and uh, 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 what you see is that the Tesla brakes one and a half second before the driver actually uses the brakes by himself. So one and a half second before the driver uses the brakes, the system already knows that there will be impact. So narrow domain, narrow domain AI will surpass human capabilities. Narrow domain, so no general AI superhuman super intelligent entity will rise in the next uh, five to ten years. I'm not sure about uh, the, ten, the uh, ten years after that, but okay. So no short clip, uh, too bad. Um, and, and, and why AI is improving so fast is that you have transfer learning. So let me uh, once again, simplify the concept of transfer learning. You have this algorithm that has been trained to determine if something is a dog or a cat, and next you want to learn it to uh, recognize a baboon, and you need less data to train this algorithm since it has already been uh, trained. And the more people use it, the better the algorithm gets, and the better the algorithm gets, the more people use it. And the more people use it, the better it gets, the better it gets, the more people use it, etc., 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 etc. So, um, we're entering the stage, the, the age of the digital butler. Uh, conversation with AI technology, chatbot technology, virtual assistant technology, not flawless, not perfect, but will be within five years. So, this is Hound, the next personal assistant. Can you start this short clip, maybe? Can you start it? Nobody's doing something. <laughs> that film you start, this is a film. Show me coffee shops with Wi-Fi. Here are several coffee shops that provide free Wi-Fi. Which ones are within walking distance and are open after 9 p.m. on Sundays? Okay, here are several coffee shops within 1.5 miles sorted by distance that are open after 9 p.m. on Sundays. Show me Asian restaurants within 10 miles that have four or more stars with at least 10 reviews and are good for kids. Here are several Asian restaurants with more than four stars based on more than 10 reviews within 10 miles that are kid-friendly. Show only those with a patio, exclude Chinese, Japanese, and Vietnamese, and sort by rating. Okay, here are several Asian restaurants sorted by rating that have outdoor seating excluding Chinese restaurants, Japanese restaurants, sushi bars, or Vietnamese restaurants. How much does it cost to Uber to the first one? An UberX can take you from here to the Spice Jar located at 2500 Bryant Street in San Francisco for... Okay, this uh, short film is uh, about seven minutes long. Uh, I'll give you a link at the end of my presentation where you can uh, watch all seven minutes. So, the age of the digital butler. Next one is Amelia, and Amelia is a virtual assistant from IPsoft. And what hospital were you born in? It's going to help the IT department. What sport did you favor when you were younger? Soccer. Thanks. 
I have validated your identity and we can now continue assisting you with your issue. Please wait while your account is unlocked. Okay, a virtual assistant that helps employees of a large Scandinavian company to unlock their password. So no more frequently asked questions for uh, this specific company because Amelia is helping uh, them. Okay, I want to show you the next digital avatar, the virtual assistant in New Zealand. They're training uh, Baby X. What we're okay, building here is digital a computer avatar. Can learn. So this is Baby. She's sort of looking at us and hearing us. So if I make a loud noise, you know, she'll get a fright. This is what she can see. So you can see my face here. Hey, see that? Right, so she's not copying my smile, she's responding to me. And now this is her little first, baby's first word book. So you can pick a, pick a page, you know, show her something, but she has to be looking at it, so get her attention. Hi baby, hi, hi, hi. What do you see? What's this? Puppy. Puppy, very good. good. What's that baby? This is because we're in New Zealand, you've got to show her a sheep. Yeah, I'll give her the word, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Right. Hi, baby. Hi. What do you see, baby? Sheep. Sheep. Very good, baby. Okay, Baby X. As a virtual, digital assistant. And now, you can imagine, you can imagine what the virtual, digital assistant in customer service will look like in the next years. You've seen Amelia. Who of you owns the Alexa, the smart speaker? No one? Okay. Google Home device? Okay, so I own an Alexa speaker at home and I can ask it all kinds of facts or reminders. There are 15,000 skills that Alexa uh, has. You can, you can ask it, what's the capital of Egypt? What's the weather over there? What's a Bitcoin worth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So a whole tsunami is coming, uh, uh, driven by AI, uh, deep learning technology, virtual assistant, personal assistant, Google Assistant, uh, Amazon Alexa, Hound, etc., etc. So in 10 years, it will be as normal to have your own personal assistant as it is now to be on the internet, mark my words. So smart systems, matching or surpassing narrow domain human capabilities. So in, in five years, we will have our own software bot determining which groceries we'll need and ordering them at the supermarket. We will have our own software bot doing a suggestion for a certain present to buy for our girl or boyfriend. We will have a software bot that can determine what's on a voicemail and take action, for example, rescheduling an appointment. We will have our own software bot that can negotiate with the bot from post the postal service, Postanel, on what's the best time to have the package delivered to your house or to your office. We will have our own software bot that does certain suggestions on what to buy, determined on what kind of content we place on social media. Okay, are there challenges? Of course there are challenges. So one of the main challenges is that um, the, the lack of transparency. So machine learning has the black box problem. You put something in, you, there, something comes out, and uh, you don't know the reasoning of the machine. Uh, there will be better malware, there will be better ransomware in the near future. Um, another challenge problem is that uh, there will, there, the, this powerful technology will be in the hands of just a small amount of large American and Chinese companies. And, of course, privacy. <laughs> so, and, 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 and this is Obama, and this is, of course, a joke, but, but, but there will be uh, uh, even more violations of, of, of privacy 
uh, rules in, uh, in the world uh, than we see before. Uh, Samsung has a smart TV and it has voice recognition and they warn their customers. Uh, they tell them you can discuss private things with your partner, but don't do it in front of our Samsung smart TV because everything will be uh, uh, captured and transmitted to third parties. So this is the user agreement of Samsung and this is a chapter of the well-known book 1984, if you get my point. So, what's uh, another challenge is that there will be technological unemployment, so people will uh, lose their job and there will be new jobs, but the, the, there will be an accelerating pace of people losing their job due to technology. Okay, can you please start this last uh, video. Don't know what what went wrong. Okay, so and and you can start this video and and please mute uh, the sound if you like. Okay, so what you see here is, are two monkeys. Monkey number one uh, gives a rock to the scientist and getting a slice of cucumber, and uh, monkey number two also returning the rock and getting a, a, a grape. A sweet grape. Okay, monkey one sees this, returning the stone, but then, once again, getting a piece of cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he doesn't want the cucumber, he wants the, the grape, the sweet, sweet red grape. So, monkey number two returns the stone, once again gets... Okay, monkey number one tests the rock. Okay, gives it back to the, to the researcher, and once again gets cucumber. Licks it, throws it back once again. <laughs> okay, the point in this last video, the point in this last video is that, is that we are all animals, right? We are all animals. And there will be, thanks to this technology, more inequality. So there will be a divide between the haves and the have-nots. So we're on the have side, so we're on the good side. But there are a lot of people who know in their work not more than doing routine, cognitive routine or uh, tasks. So we need to be aware of the fact that these people could be left behind by this new tsunami of new technology. If you want to read more about um, this subject, I've created a landing page, Butler bookmarks, you can read more about this subject after this evening. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>